Welcome to Scream Queen's Horror Movie Road Trip Podcast. Ah! I am your sole survivor, Mr. Josh, and that was Miss Justine. And your... that. <laughs> oh, I can't, yeah, I gotta finish, because you are our final girl, and they gotta know it. I am a final girl. I am. Do so. you hear that, world? You got your soul survivor <laughs> and your final girl, and we are flying down the highway right now. Yeah. You hear those beautiful road noises? Ugh. We wish you were in the car with us, guys. <sighs> guys, so we are in New Mexico right now, and we're just driving along, and <sighs> New Mexico, what's up with Jim Rhodes? Yeah, we're having, we love beautiful enchanted New Mexico, but we're currently on I-40 heading west. We are west of Albuquerque. We're just hitting mile marker 89. Um, but these roads be knocking us around, guys. I uh, I felt a little abused. It it made Justine Peer Pants a little bit. Uh, a few times. Let's I, just say, and I forgot my Depends, so it's actually a dilemma. I may have sharded and or farted. Oh no, we're no. That was the assumption you had was that you would just fart, and then the <laughs> reality is that you shart. Oh, I was leaving the and or so it could maybe sound <laughs> hypothetical <laughs> oh, no. no we're not no. pissing and shitting up in this car <laughs> but we are having a damn good time road tripping in the usa and where are we heading justine i can't wait to tell you guys we're headed to las vegas <laughs> yes nevada not new mexico <laughs> before you get mad at us we are not going to vegas right now in a pandemic to whoop it up no um as we mentioned yeah goodness, last episode you no finish way. you tell them oh tell them what we're no doing. we would never do that my sister recently moved and so we're hanging out at her house helping her decorate yeah. help, helping her just relax and bring a few boxes we've and got yeah i've got some stuff that she left behind and we're gonna hang out with her and we are going to go to an outdoor um, experience called the Neon Boneyard. Boneyard. Bone Baby Yard. Neon. And it's kind of like where a lot of like Las Vegas neon signs go went to, to be to yeah. restore it. A little haven for them. And there's lights. Like they have like a light display and yeah, it's there's, just sweet. Yeah, there's a Vegas tradition of when, you know, they... They're always tearing down the casinos to build new hotels, new casinos. And the great, the Neon Boneyard is where a lot of the old neon signs go to live out the rest of their yes, lives. They're still glowing. You know, they still like to show them because, of course, you know, you might have, it might have been a long time since you visited Las Vegas. And you want to just see that old sign that brought you there that first time. And it's a good dose of colorful nostalgia and uh we're gonna go during the day and go back and see it at night get some cool pictures just experience that that's kind of like our main draw why we're here um we, we're not gonna be in the casinos no. we might go to a restaurant that is you know abiding by the cdc guidelines for restaurants yeah we're still waiting to hear back on our reservation um request they're yes. taking it seriously. Yeah, they're, most so. restaurants are only at 25% capacity in Vegas. So we are. We're not going to whoop it up, unfortunately, but we're going to have fun, and we'll whoop it up at her sister's house and have a good time. It's going to be amazing. Shout out to Dakota. We're headed to you today, baby. So, since we're going... Baby! Go oh, baby. Baby! Since we're going to the neon boneyard, I'm stretching out Ooh, the neon. Yeah. That's our connection. Emphasize. It's our connection. Articulated. Connection. Connection. To our movie that we're covering today, which is Justine. Uh, the Neon Demon. It's a uh, Nicholas Winding Refn 2016 film. Um, watch it. Pause yeah. right here, guys. Go watch it. Go watch it. It's on Amazon for free. And then come back and enjoy our take on it. And yes. So pause. See you in a bit. Come back. Come back. But hey guys, you're back. All right. Hi. Okay, so we're going to cover the Neon What'd Demon. What'd you guys think of the movie? Crazy, huh? Let's talk about it. <laughs> Let's break it down. So, <laughs> 2016 Nicholas Winding Ruffin. Ruffin is, is a little roughin. Oh, he's roughing it up in this one. It's a classic kind of... Tw uh, tw what? 20, I was going to say, I'm trying to like <laughs> say teens, 20 teens. It's a classic teens. 20 teens yes. horror slow burn. Yeah. Is what I was trying to spit out of my damn mouth. And it's dreamy. 
And it's flowy. Not, and not for everybody. And it's showy. Oh, flowy and showy. Flowy. I mean, I'm just rhyming now. I like when you rhyme, but um, let's, let's get going. Let's get going. Okay, so, yeah, it, it's not for everyone. Obviously, he's he's got a style. And he's he's trying something a little different here. Oh, a little different and a little the same. We've seen some of these themes before of, you know, beauty being indulged um, to negative effects. You yes, know? yeah. That's kind of a classic theme. Predator and prey, the, you know, like, L.A., it spits, you know, it chews you up and spits you Letting out. Letting your environment take control of you. You becoming the thing that you didn't want to be. Yeah. 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 That's some themes up on here. Damn. This movie has some themes, Justine. How about we un unfold those, unpackage those? How about we just, um, I'm going to delicately undo it like a Christmas. You know when you get a Christmas present and you're like, I like this wrapping. I want to And for say a little that. bit you try to like open it at the <laughs> corners and then you get a little upset with yourself when you see that you've pulled some of that paper. And then you say, oh, fuck and it. And then you're then just you like, just never mind. Yeah. Okay, here that's we go. Good, that's a good metaphor for a show. We start off like. Oh, let's peel the corners, and then by the end, it's like ball jokes. It's, and... <laughs> it's a ripped up mess, <laughs> and we there's a big present at the end. But that's you what it. road tripping is about. <laughs> yes. It's just a One couple of... gals. <laughs> just you, you have this idea you of how you're going to do the road trip. Having fun on the road. But then, like, whatever unfolds, unfolds, and it's fun. And at this point, we're on episode 61. Boy, have we done some road trips. Yeah, we know a thing or two about road trips. 61. So here we are out in the middle of the desert talking about L.A. And a classic... It's a classic story, of, as we were saying, of things going wrong. It has wrong. themes that are, yeah, are timeless. Let's things go. going wrong. I'm so <laughs> articulate. It's okay. Something got to do with something, Something got to do with something. <laughs> so our movie starts with an eyeball. Well... I know it's the uh, glitter and that on, beautiful... we want to introduce the cast and everything, don't do, we? But do we? Yeah, yeah. we do. Okay, You're okay. right. We I'm do, just we like, okay. fucking it up. Nicholas Wine, it's fine. It up. It's the, the desert does that to people, Josh, <laughs> and I understand this. One time, before we even, like, get into this, when Josh and I were much younger in our years, we drove from Los Angeles to Oklahoma City, and we stopped in the desert... And we danced to the Smiths music. No, and it was Bjork. Oh, we no, it was Bjork. Bjork. Yeah. We danced Damn. to Bjork in the desert. Yes. So, we have had moments in the desert, Josh. I'll never forget them. It does, does things to you. It does All things to you. All right, let's keep going. Yeah, All right. The cast, crew. All right, Nicholas Wine and Gruffin. He didn't just direct this shiz. He and wrote you, it. And you might know him from Drive mm -hmm. fame. Yeah, you might know him from Only God Forgives. You might know him because he's your neighbor. <laughs> it's true. You, you might. You might, be you your might know him. It's Let okay if you do. In fact, that would be awesome. Hit us up and say he's he's like my bud. Yeah, let's my know. My backdoor if, bud. If he's your not your backdoor <laughs> bud. If he's your buddy, your friend, your neighbor, let's know. That's cool. Or maybe so he's not cool. your guy. Maybe he's not your friend. Maybe he's not your buddy. <laughs> maybe you don't know him at all. That's okay. You're, you're with us. <laughs> we don't really know him at all. I mean, all right, we, we kind of get an aesthetic from him. Okay, let's yeah. just keep going. So he wrote it, he directed it, and he's got Elle Fanning. Hmm, wonder who she's related to. <laughs> I think her name is Idaho Fanning. <laughs> Kentucky Fanning. What's her sister's name? New Mexico name? Fanning. Oh, Dakota. <laughs> yeah, Dakota Fanning. Uh, got her sis a gig, but in respect, Elle Fanning, you bring it, girl. Yeah, she's doing her own thing. You got your own thing. She might have got her foot in the door because of her sister. Or maybe not. But she's got a pretty foot. But she got a damn pretty foot. And she's going to use it. Mm hmm And she's going to walk all over this movie. She's going to shove it in crevices and in places and orifices. Yeah. Maybe she's not going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> that's her body, her choice. You, do, you that, don't know. That's her pretty foot. Yeah, that's her foot to do with what she like, okay? Uh, Jenna Malone. Jenna Malone, girl, you've been around for a hot fucking minute. Stepmom. Any bastard out of Carolina fans out there? <laughs> <laughs> Any Anybody like... Johnny Darko. Yeah, what is that saved movie? Yeah. Anybody out there know what I'm talking about? Yeah, you might know her from you those You might know films. her. Sucker punch, perhaps. You might know her. 
She's intense and kind of looks like a really pretty elf. Yeah. Oh, yeah. She's not, very delicate features. Not a Peter Jackson elf because they're all blonde, but like a brunette elf. Put a blonde wig on her and she could be a Peter Jackson And they're elf. not all blonde because like in The Hobbit, the main like like the main elf girl falls in love with one of the dwarves is oh, not. Oh, that's true. So and you just you got... made up a whole bunch of shit and Liv Tyler is not. <laughs> Liv Tyler's not blonde. How fucking dare you, sir? Okay, well, the hottest one, Legolas, is blonde. <laughs> no, and all that, that is so true. <laughs> That's truth, okay? Anyways, Jenna Malone, we love her. I love her. She looks a little like a beautiful elf. Okay? Yeah, she also doesn't ever age, so girl, keep up that skincare regimen. I'm jealous. <laughs> it's got to be the plant-based squalions. It's squalions. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's got to be. It's got to be uh, a lot of things. Maybe All right. things that are referenced in this Yes, in she's this creepy film. in this movie. She's not a beautiful elf in this movie. I mean, she no. looks like a beautiful elf, but yeah. she doesn't act like one. Oh, no. Mm -mm. Girl, you got some troubles. Okay, next up, we got Abby Lee as, as Sarah. Abby Lee, she's been recently on Lovecraft Country. Yes, love that show. And, woo, love her. She's intense. She she's got a very intense presence. Oh, my gosh. And it is a look. We were talking earlier, Josh and I, about her look, and... I kind of made a joke about how it's like Nev Campbell has her little like <laughs> like moment in a lot of films. She Love does. Nev Campbell. Yeah, we, so we're Nev Campbell stands. It just like Nev transcends <laughs> like her characters are all interconnected. It's a universe of Nev. Okay, so like just go with that. So Abby Lee, girl, you got that vibe. Okay, you got that intense look in your face. You like to kind of like. You like to serve it. You, you like to serve it. You, you got like that kind of shoulder up, cocked up. Got head, that head down. down. Yeah, mm -hmm. head down. That's her. You got that look. mouth agape because she's trying to always accentuate she, that jawline. And she's got the head down, eyes looking up. Mm -hmm. We're both a in little, the car right now doing, doing these it. poses. <laughs> Anybody driving past us is like, oh, fierce queens in the car for sure. They are yeah. some fierce scream queens. Is what fierce I'm scream queens. Scream queens. Scream queens. <laughs> Fist squim queens. Um, okay, and then we've got Bella Heathcote. She's Gigi. She's just a bitch. Yeah. And I mean that in the non-misogynist way. I just mean... She just like, has a bitchy attitude. Yeah. Yeah. No, then she's unkind. Okay, she's we'll keep going. Nice. We Hello, we have um, a little like, hey there daddy, Keanu Reeves moments going on. Yeah, but he's like nasty. He's not being a hey like, there daddy. dirty, scuzzy. Yeah. Like He's like being a, like, a perv. And yeah. he's being a prevert, and he's, <laughs> yeah, he's, he's, a total prevert. he's also being like kind of like he's skeezy, and he just like wants to make a dollar off of like these terrible like situations yeah, that come to girls, his hotel. Poor girls need a place to stay for cheap. Okay, <laughs> Christina Hendricks, she's a vibe. She's an entire movie. We in love this. her. You're, she's only in this movie for like four minutes. So she's everything. But she is like she. She's what the whole, like the film is that right she there. Represents she represents almost all of like, LA. Yeah, like, like all the bad things about LA. She's like that pretty face in LA that like can cut you deep, like yeah. Because in the we'll get to it. Okay, Gives all right. Backhanded yeah. compliments. Yep, yep. We'll get to it. Okay, and then Carl Glussman, oh Dean. Dean. I don't know. <sighs> he tries. Else. He tries. Okay. I got a truck. Big semi trying to cut me off. If you trying hear. to like get our if you, number. If you hear screams and crashes, <laughs> their screams. Well, they wouldn't because yeah, who's gonna who's edit gonna, this? Yeah, who's gonna put it up? <laughs> um, so nobody. Or I guess like oh hi. My God, we're gonna become like a found footage. Yes. Podcast. Found footage podcast. They went missing. Okay. Yes, what was found? Uh, we have to like at the top. Let's just mention like the beauty of the film comes from in a lot of ways the cinematographer capturing just like LA. Yeah, and who's the cinematographer we were talking Natasha about? Natasha Breyer. Yes, and she does a great job. And it's something about the mix of her visuals with the sound design. Oh oh yeah. And, and even got, down like, to the acting and the cast, how everything combined makes the most like dreamy atmosphere. Yeah, it's all like lent to like there's it's the whole film is a is very moody. You're you almost question if anything you're watching is actually completely happening. real. Yeah, like is this really really happening or is the it's also like uh it's like a fairy tale in a lot of ways. It's a Grimm's it's like a Grimm's fairy tale. tale. Yeah. Like you you think that 
Well, you don't think if you know Nicholas Winding Ref and you know like the movie that you're going to walk into is probably not going to be all sugar plum fairies dancing and yeah, going back to like and... Bronson, he loves hardcore violence. Yes, so if yeah, if you've been acquainted and, like, pops at all, of violence yeah, too. At, at all, because he, he he loves like to saturate his films with like beautiful faces, but he also likes those faces to get punched the fuck up. And when he does use <laughs> violence, it's impactful because it does come very forcefully and out of nowhere a lot of times. Yeah. Well, there, might be a, there might be a build up to it and you might see it coming, but it's still like shocking when and it happens. That's, uh, and that's in ways like how he's such a good director is that like the build up, the intensity to those moments of violence that are happening you know they're coming. You don't know what it's actually going to be. It's that journey you go on in those moments in your stomach. Like, it's just ugh, tensed up that you don't want what's going to happen to happen. But And this movie's almost like an hour and 40 minutes of slow burn and then 20 minutes of that pop of violence ugh. at the end or 25 minutes or so of when he just shocks you for, like, the last chapter of the film. But, like, to say slow burn is a, a compliment, though. Like, it's not in any ways, like, where you're just like, I don't want... I, yeah, like, to us, it's a compliment. It's, Other people, it's not, for some reason. Like, some people don't like nuance. Yeah, or, or don't even want to, like... <laughs> the subtlety of, like, telling a story to pull you in slowly that... So, by the end, you are into what's happening to these characters. Yeah. And you understand the consequences I better love a, than a if you didn't burn. know the characters. That lets you kind of like, uh, like a good mattress, you just kind of like sink it, you know, like good. it fits you in just right. And in a slow burn movie like this, where it takes its time and it really allows you to like get the vibe of what's all going on and all of that through music and colors and those pops of violence and then a, a release at the end. You gotta get that release. <laughs> okay. So, so let's, yeah, let's let's start at the beginning. Let's start and let's start. We get a beautiful at the very beginning. I do want to mention the title sequence because it sets the tone for the movie. You're, it's just a lot of colorful glitter, glitter falling, and the the neon titles and the music, and it sets. I don't. It's I guess somewhat like electronica mixed mm-hmm. with. Um, I think there is an orchestra involved, obviously, but... It's operatic, but it's also, yeah, it's got that kind of, like, techno-electronic, like, vibe to it. Where you would hear it in a club, but not like any club. Yeah. A certain type of club. A neon demon club. Yeah. And then then that title just popping up um, uh, uh, around all of the glitter, the neon demon. And then the first thing we see is an eyeball, and we pull the camera zooms out it is a zoom right? it's attached to a face and then all yeah we're zooming out we get like a beautiful blonde uh elf fanning whose throat is cut she's in a beautiful dress it's it's very dramatic yeah, first and we're like, oh my top. god we're starting and, with like a dead girl yeah pull out even more and we see oh no this is a photo shoot this is a photographer and there it's like you know just like a set that they're shooting on She's covered in blood, saturated. And basically, he's like, cut, that's a wrap. And we cut to Elle Fanning, like, cleaning herself off. Which, I wonder why there wasn't a shower for her. A lot of sets will have a shower. No, she had these, like, little wet wipes. Wet wipes, trying to get all this blood off herself. I'm like, oh, it's going to take all night. But she's in the room with Jenna Malone, our Mm -hmm. intense, beautiful elf. (laughs) Yes. And, uh, well, it's, uh... Jenna Malone's character, who kind of Ruby speaks up first and is like trying to be helpful to her, wants to, you know, just in the beginning, you kind of think, like, that's so nice. She's like a good girl, wants her to have a good group of girls. Yeah, trying to take her under her wing, help her through, navigate this new world she's she can in. immediately like see that she this you know this blonde haired girl it because she doesn't want to reveal her name at first to ruby uh she can see she's timid and shy but she is also immediately like taken in with her because she's gorgeous but yeah. you're right she's very doe-eyed and innocent looking and she puts off this kind of it's a deer in the headlights yeah uh, like almost kind of like a shock look yeah almost kind of like not knowing what's going on but it's strange because then, you know, she does warm up to her. She's like, my name is Jessie. 
and I'm staying in this like flea bag motel. I'm, you know, you gather that she's a runaway and that she met the photographer online to get pictures and you're just kind of like, okay, yeah, so tell you're her, like, I don't have parents yeah. or you're any like, family. Why? It, you, then you get this moment, this shift from she's not really naive as much as she's hiding something. Mm -hmm. So her timidness is like, can I open up to this person? when I'm supposed to be, you just get that she's got secrets. Yeah, within like five minutes, we're given this mystery of like, what's really going on with Jesse? Yeah. And it might be a mystery that's never revealed fully. You just kind of pieced things together, but yeah. from the get-go, you're given this air of mystery. One, you're given, you're seeing something that's not reality from the beginning. Our first image, we think, is someone murdered. And then, like you said, we do this like dolly zoom out that reveals she's on a set. So there's a lot of this, like what you're seeing is not really reality. Is also kind of like a big theme. So, And it's true, you never really know, is this scene real? Is this real life? Yeah, it's just all unreliable because <laughs> things kind of flow in and out of dreamlike, nightmarish It is almost like a reality. stream of consciousness. Like yeah. just Jesse floating along through these different encounters with the same people but yeah and, and and that too lends itself to this dreamlike quality because Los Angeles is huge and it's but I, I understand it's also like you know you do run into the same circles of people but like she just keeps like running into the Ruby character then she just runs into the other characters that we meet over yeah. and over again. And you're like, okay, that also is like, okay, is she kind of trapped in this like universe of, I don't know. Yeah. The film's open to interpretation, which is also why well, I like it. Because one of the things that is happening in this movie is you feel like things are closing in on Jesse. And this, that's part of it. It's like we keep seeing the same people mm -hmm. because they're kind of closing in on her. There's something they want from her. Yeah. And she is gorgeous, mm -hmm. and she does come off as this, like, deer in the headlights, in the headlights. or even just that, like, that natural piece of perfection in yeah. the forest that you see, and it's so innocent, and you don't want to touch it, you don't want to mess with it, but, oh my gosh, you also want it so much, you want to consume it, because it's like when you see little baby feeds, and you're like, oh my god, I just want to eat them baby feeds. <laughs> Do <laughs> baby you? Feet. Do you want to eat some baby feeds? And then Ruby, because she thinks this girl's naive and needs to be under her wings, like, come out with me. Let's go. We're going to go Let's out Let's go tonight. to a party. And they go to this party, and it's just like every over-the-top L.A. factory party, basically, right? Yeah, it's, gonna... it's artsy. There's, like, a model who is, um, at one point, it looks like she's levitating, and there's, like, this magic, uh, this otherworldliness Very about it. Very mysterious again. Um, and then, and then we also at this point at the party get these more abstract kind of like shots where she's like, it's her, but she's surrounded by triangles or, you know, she mm -hmm. looks like she's surrounded by mirrors and only seeing reflections of herself. So in those shots, I think she's in her head. And this is where she gets introduced to Gigi and what's Sarah. Sarah. Gigi, yes. She's addicted to plastic surgery. She's on like, her nose, down her chin, down her ears, Ben. Mm -hmm. Like, names off everything. She's like, well, you, you gotta go through a little pain to earn perfection. Right? Yeah, and she refers to herself, you know, as like a well-maintained car. And to me, that's... Gross. Gross. Like, <laughs> in, a, in a lot of ways, selling yourself short, sister. Like, uh. Okay, but... So she's obsessed with her own beauty, and we start to gather that this is a, a big tale about narcissism. And you can tell these girls are acting like her friends. They, there's something mean about these girls from the get-go. Sarah the has first, those like intense eyes, like she's always judging. Yeah, and Ruby comes across like she's trying to be nice, and she's the only one that does seem maybe genuine. Uh, Sarah and Gigi, they come off just kind of terrible from the get-go. The way they're questioning her, the kind of like weird comments they're asking you're like are you food or sex well you can definitely tell that their in their environment has influenced the way that they start to like treat people, treat people. Yeah. and so they immediately they're they're immediately assessing her like where she's an where are you she's gonna climb is it gonna be higher than me and they do they say things uh and it's not verbatim but they you know to paraphrase like the conversation they have in the bathroom it is all about like i want to know where are you in reference to me? Mm -hmm. 
Like, are you going to take me down or are you going to be somebody that I just see in my rear view? And, and then they also want to gauge her because uh, uh, sex, eroticism, it's all in this film. Uh, these women are beautiful, but they also want to know, like, who are you fucking? You know, is that how you're that young getting to yeah. the places that you're getting? Is it because you're having sex with somebody? And and then they just want to know, does she have sex? Like, how much sex does she? It's it's a it's like a weird locker room scene that you would yeah. almost see in high school, but uh, elevated to because obviously the age of them. But they are acting kind of childish and bullies. bullies. They're acting like bullies. Yeah. <laughs> So she has that encounter. She meets those girls. She we she automatically knows she has competition with them. She might not feel that way, but she knows that's how she's being sized up. Yeah, because she also doesn't come off too much like it phases her, but not in the sense of like she doesn't come off as formidable as much as full of herself. And again, everything is so dreamy. Even how they deliver every line. And I'm just going to use an example. Like, give me something to say, Justine. Anything off the cuff. But the all. mountains are pretty. Okay, this is how they deliver in the movie. The mountains are pretty. Like everything is very slow and kind of thought. Questioning out though, when like they talk. yeah, like oh, the that could be a bigger like conversation. Pretty. Yeah, it's <laughs> everything is very dreamlike. Mm -hmm. Um, the ne the very next morning. So also, oh, you know, she's staying at that flea bag motel, and Keanu Reeves is playing her, um, playing the hotel manager. And scumbag, he's a scumbag, bitch. and he lends his hotel to runaways, and and he, some of them out. Yeah, we learn. We, yeah, we he yeah. That's the okay. But next morning she goes to. Um, a modeling agency, and that's where we meet the Christina Hendricks character who plays Roberta. She's smitten by her from the get-go. She even tells her, like, other girls come in here and they're good, but you're you're going to be great. Mm -hmm. um, she tells her basically to act. She says, you're, when people ask you're 19, I need you to sign this parent permission for me. And she even kind of insinuates that, like, you just... If you can't get your parents to sign it, like, you sign it. She just, like, it's just a signature away, you know? Yeah. Like, And when she goes to get that form, she steps out and goes into, like, the lobby area to get it from a receptionist. And she sees, like, these four girls, these models that are waiting there to see her, like, to get their chance. <laughs> and she doesn't give up to them. She tells two of them right there to leave. Like, you no, too. bye. Yeah. It's like you too. She's cut and dry, you know. and so and well, she even says something really shitty. Remember to um, Jesse, she says, "I wouldn't call you fat, but someone else might. So you yes. might want to lose a little weight." And here's Ella Fanning, like well, we, a thin, beautiful yeah, woman. Yeah, we'll, you know, like, we'll get to see her entire, well, not entire physique, but we'll get to see her, and it's like you just, yeah, you. The words resonate that you're like, that is so cruel to yeah. say. As, and I just beautiful. said something that might have come off. I said a thin, beautiful woman. All women of all sizes are beautiful. I was just yes. happening to say she's thin and she's beautiful. Yes. End of that story. Yeah. Uh, I, I got you. <laughs> I got you, sir. You're you're good. We're good. Uh, yeah, so she's 16 years old. We find that out, though. Yes. Like, and she, the uh, Roberta is just like, okay, but you tell people you're 19. Um, we've got to assume that everybody just immediately gets transfixed on her. Like, yeah, because even Dean, the photographer, shows back up. Is this when she has her other date? With yeah, her? yeah. He, she, he picks her up outside the motel that she's staying at, and he's so happy for her because she's obviously told him, I got signed. He's the only one, even though he can be, can, I mean, he know at one point finds out she's only 16, so he's a creep, but weirdly the only person that's nice to her, like genuinely yeah. nice to her, but I... At the same time, you're like, okay, like, she told you you're 16, and then you're just still okay with saying, pursuing that. Yeah. So. If he is pursuing it in the way, because then we don't ever see him They don't having, ever say how old he is. Though. Yeah. Maybe he's, like, 18 or 19. I don't know. I assumed he was in his 20s. I assume he is as well. Yeah. But when he picks her up, though, you know, she's so excited, too, and he uh, makes the, you know, joke of, like, don't forget me when I'm famous, or when you're famous, yeah. and, like, did they say anything about my pictures? And... She, Roberta did say Call something. Call amateur hour. Yes. And she requested that 
uh, Jesse get her pictures done by another photographer, and then she was going to contact him. Yeah. So. But she but tries Jessie, to spare his feelings. Yeah. She's like, no, she, they didn't mention anything. And that just shows that <laughs> she isn't completely void of, like, the of empathy and the ability well, to, like, she, sympathy and Well, we to definitely care see an art from her. You know, yeah. she is kind at the beginning and genuine and maybe scared and vulnerable. Mm -hmm. But she wants something. And when uh, Dean takes her up to the Hollywood Hills, she tells him, like, I, I'm not good at any, any, you, she, they, these are her words. I'm not good at anything. I can't sing, can't dance, I don't have any talent, but I'm pretty. And people love pretty. And so I can use that to make money. If this was a Disney movie, this moment up in the Hollywood Hills would have been her I Want, I Need yes. song. And she would have sang it. Yeah. It would have been a wonderful moment. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it would have been. Part of your world. Part of your world. It would have been amazing. But she's not That's a different an animated movie, character. <laughs> yeah. Um. So she then, I guess, the next day goes to the photo shoot that Roberta wanted her to go on, and oh, look who's there! Is it Sarah or Gigi or both? I kind of forgot. No, it's Ruby, who's the. Oh makeup. yeah, Ruby's there. Oh, it's later at the casting call where the girls are there. Yeah. yeah. So yes, she, she goes. She goes to a photo shoot and she shows up and immediately the photographer is like, this is a closed shoot. And it's supposed to be like one of like the top photographers in LA, like that everyone's wanting to work with. Yeah. And so people are going to be jealous. Really jealous. I mean, they're immediately jealous that they, uh, and Ruby is a little apprehensive. Like she's, she kind of like, obviously she's been in um, Los Angeles long enough to know a thing or two about cre creeps and she's immediately worried that Jesse might be that she might be prey. But I also wonder if there's something else about her concern. Is she worried that she's going to miss out? Like is he part like can, we can go ahead and give spoiler alerts. There's something more menacing going on. Yeah well there is like and yeah it's supernatural I wonder if he to a is, point. Yeah and I wonder if he is a part of it. And she's worried that there is going to be a ritual or something done without her in their presence. It could be. And I didn't pick up on that until like the second or third viewing where I'm like, what is she so worried about? Yeah. Because I don't think it's really about Jesse. Or she doesn't want, maybe she kind of like gauging from Jesse how innocent she is. She's like, no, that's my treat. I want her. Yeah. And so she's immediately Afraid. jealous of anybody who might get to yes, I think damage right. her goods, so to speak. And you and ourselves are wondering, oh great, is this going to be a yes, predatory it situation? Is, it and is. And it borderline is. I mean, he asked her to get naked. Granted, he thinks she's eighteen. Yes, he does but, think she's legal, but he he just tells her, "Drop your drawers. I'm going to cover you in." Yeah, and we don't see anything sexual. Paint. He just yeah, exactly. Just like uses his hands all over her yeah, body it's erotic to how he gold applies all it over her. yeah it's like no she doesn't get a gold crown her whole body gets crowned yes he has given her the seal of approval he is painting her in gold that's why i took from him yes i mean she he's got yeah i think it's like she's gold mm -hmm. and she does look beautiful i mean it's it's a cool moment it's a cool moment visually beautiful the story yeah like if you didn't have any of the story and you just got that little snippet you'd be like oh what a visually beautiful stunning scene yeah that was but then you know then you add in the story part that you know up to this point and you're like oh creepy uh she's 16 uh yeah so there's layers to the movie but then afterwards she finds ruby out like in the parking lot as you're like on the side of the building she's like it went great everything was wonderful and Ruby's still being a little, like, weary well, or Ruby's, leery. I gathered from this that Ruby was trying to, like, gauge, like, did he take advantage of yeah, you? And, like, you're around. saying maybe it's because she's uh, got her own plans for her, you know? Like, it's... She's like, okay, you haven't been deflowered exactly, yet. Exactly. Exactly. Okay, so Jessie heads back to her um, hotel room and finds that there is an intruder in there, and so she goes down to get Hank to go in there and to see who the intruder is. <laughs> and Hank's pissed off about it. He doesn't want to do it until she said, okay, well, I'm calling the police. He's like, hey, hey, okay, never mind. I'll come help you. And then what do they find? A leopard. Or I, I guess it's not a leopard. It's, it's like a mountain, mountain lion. lion. Yeah. Yeah, they have mountain lions up in the well, hills. Yeah, it's known that they California. have them in city limits. So that's 
that I right there, I think, one. is like a wonderful, not yeah. a wonderful nod, but it is a big, that's an L.A. nod. Like, okay. And also, is she, is it one of those, like, the mountain lion got in, like, is it really as a, a mountain symbolic, lion? Yeah, what, what yeah is like, it? or is she about to be prey? I've so. read that some people looking back say it's Ruby. Like, and, yeah, as a mountain lion. Like, kind of coming in and check. And... Or she sends her familiar or yeah. something. <laughs> um, okay, so, um, and at the same time that Jesse's dealing with this, Ruby meets up for Din Din's with her two favorite gal pals, Gigi and Sarah, to shit talk about Jesse. Well, they do shit talk about her, especially Sarah. Sarah can immediately sense that, like, she is competition. Yeah. And Gigi, not so much, because Gigi va has va has placed worth in her plastic surgery, and so she's like not too scared of the 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 climber yet, mm -hmm. you know. But Ruby, on the other hand, is like, oh, she is gonna be something. She's special, yeah. and it's and it's very. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I almost said... Uh, there's ominousness yeah, about the conversation. Yeah, but I was trying to use a different word. Like yeah. It, there's something... Obviously, there's something underlying that yeah. we're talking about. And it's very menacing. It's seedy, but we just yeah. don't really... We don't know. I guess, is the word I'm looking yeah. for. Yeah, we don't know yet. Going on. But we're, we're feeling it. And, of course, the music, which throughout this movie, in, enhances and elevates all the scenes. Like, if, you know... The whole idea was to get you a little, like, tensed up. That music just, like, amplified it, and your stomach is in the pits. <laughs> yeah. The music's amazing. The composer, oh, I wrote it down, where is he? Cliff Martinez. And he's worked previously with Nicholas Winding Ruffin, so obviously... He also he, did the music for Traffic, too, right? Yes, Which yes. is one of my all-time favorite non-horror no, movies. Yeah, and that's not Nicholas Winding Ruffin, but... No, so deferred. Yeah, uh, it's just... He... And even finding that out that he did traffic, it's like, yes, and, the, and that and it's good there too. So he's very talented. Um, he really evokes like he the captures setting the, and yeah, what's the happening. atmosphere, the environment. He really gets it. It, it. Like I said, it enhances it. It's so intense sometimes. Yeah. Um, okay, so so they're they're talking. Something's brewing. We don't know, but the conversation. Something is brewing underneath. And Jesse next goes to a casting call, and she sees Sarah there. They're on their undies. They are all in a beige or, like, nude-type underwear and heels, stilettos. So, uh, you know, it's a walk. They want to see if they can runway walk. So it's for a fashion show. And even though I didn't... I never caught the the designer's name. I, and she does say it. Gigi does because she's like, oh, he lo it, I'm, you know, in all of the shows. But what, that's yeah. like a, in a whole other scene. But, so, it's Jessie there and there are tons of other models who are all beautiful and, uh, you know, you can tell that they have a lot invested mm -hmm. as well. And Sarah's there. Sarah is there. And Sarah's whole thing is, and she brings it up, is that she's older. Like, Sarah's like in her uh, almost 30. Yeah, she's almost 30. And so she's knowing, she knows that her time is maxed out, unfortunately, in high fashion, you know, whatever. I, I don't agree with that, but that is how she feels about things. Yeah. And um, so it's a, I am sad in this scene. It feels sad. It feels yeah, uh, dirty. It's it's so it's uh, the mean way to do things. Mean way to do things <laughs> where all these women are standing there, and this man, it it will not it will barely look at them as they walk, um, and they look so scared. Scared, almost, and yeah. they, all of them have rejection just painted all over them. They've but One not Jesse. Yeah. Not her. She's like, I got this. <laughs> Jesse has that. She knows she's pretty. It's the one thing she knows about confidence herself. that, uh, and it's not false confidence because she is gorgeous, and, and that is why she is. It illuminates right out of her, and that's why it catches his attention, and he can't take his eyes off of her. He's enamored by her. He walks. She or she walks. He smiles, and Sarah is not happy about defeated. it. Defeated. 
And when she's rejected, she runs to the bathroom and she ends up smashing a mirror. And Jesse hears it. She's leaving happy. Jesse's walking down the stairs, smiling, beaming. She just had the prince of the ball approve her. Yep. And she hears the crash. And she kind of goes back to, like, you know, do the nice thing to Sarah and be like, you were wonderful out there, Sarah. I don't know what they don't see you in Sarah's pitch. She's like, don't do that, bitch. Don't, don't you do that. dare. Don't. Don't you console me when I am sad. And then, how does she cut her hand? I forget how... Uh, well, she's... Okay, so at the point when she goes into the bathroom, Sarah's, like, on the floor, kind of sitting yeah. on the floor. And so she's just trying to get down on her level, but there's glass oh, she all on the... the glass, and yeah. Sarah kind of comes at her and it scares her a little bit and we don't know what Sarah was going to do uh -huh. when she came at her but it did result in Jessie cutting her hand on glass and then Sarah can't help herself can't contain herself she eyeballs that blood and lurches lunges lurches I guess Both, lunges yeah kind of lurches of. and lunges lurches and lunges leaps forward yeah. I'm like lurches gives a slow connotation so I guess she lunges forward yeah. And just grabs Jesse's hand and just starts licking and eating that blood. Uh, it, oh, and so Jesse like pulls her hand it back and runs Jessie out. out. And but this is kind of where things start to take a turn. After it's this, another like, pivot, yeah. Yeah, after this experience, it's almost like Jesse is just full on narcissist now. Like that thing we were reading earlier today. Yeah. It's at this moment where she embraces her full okay. I'm just going to be pretty. Yeah. And uh, Sarah had asked her in the bathroom, like, what does it feel like to have everybody, you know, look at you? And Jesse tells her, like, it's everything. And so, you know, like, that's her driving, motivating force right there. It's everything to her. The acknowledgement that her shell is her entire worth. It's sad and it speaks a lot to a lot of things that we're only addressing now and pop culture and free Britney self-worth for anybody and you know beauty is in all sizes and in all shapes and we have a we have a much more evolved idea and that but Nicholas Winding Ruffin doesn't feel that way that's what he's showing us is the harshness of LA mm -hmm. he's like, or I, I don't each other yeah I don't think that I don't think the film is in any way applauding the the ways that some it's people deal with it. It's just like a supernatural version of what's yeah happening to young girls in Hollywood. It's shedding a neon light yeah. on it. Okay, <clears throat> okay. So we cut to the fashion show, right? We Nick? get back to the Fleabag Hotel where Jesse has this kind of like dream. This dream where. Hank busts into oh. her hotel room and holds her at knife point. And, like mouth rapes her with a knife, yeah, right? Yeah, and shoves it like down her throat. And but then she wakes up. But then there is Hank going down the. Oh, and before all that, Dean and her. Uh... Oh, she's really shitty to Dean at a restaurant. They all go out to eat. And they happen to, of course, they run into Gigi and Sarah and the, the, a famous photographer. Well, that's after they, yeah, like, do the uh, fashion show. Oh, that's after yeah, the fashion like show? Yeah, like, she she dumps him after the fashion oh, show. Oh, okay, so, Yeah. So, okay, so we get, so that happens, whatever, the dream things and maybe, the, okay, we'll get back to that. The fashion show, <laughs> sorry, we jumped ahead. Oh, my goodness. So, she goes back to her hotel room with her cut hand that I'm sorry I got caught up in a moment she takes her cut hand goes back kind of has this like pass out moment with Dean oh, he yeah. goes to the well, she has the flowers yeah she <laughs> he goes true. to the CVS and gets some stuff for her and then he runs into Hank and Hank is like yo I want my money and so Dean gives some money to him and, and there's this weird moment where Hank is like hey if she's not gonna give you anything. I got this 13 year old. Yeah. It's a gross. couple rooms down. You can have her. And so maybe I mean because we haven't seen okay so Dean did kiss her but then he found out that she yep. was younger than and we haven't and so far all that we know and she makes a point to say so Jesse's a virgin. Yes. And I think that's important like we were saying earlier to Ruby. 
Yes. So Jesse's a virgin and she's 16 and she does tell Dean that it is after they share a kiss. He, uh, we don't see him pursuing her anymore yeah, in guess, a sexual yeah, way. Yeah, I guess he is kind of a And nice so we her. kind of think maybe, or I kind of think maybe he starts to take her on like a brotherly kind of thing. Like, oh God, you have nobody. Um, but not because then there is a moment where... He's uh, waiting for her to turn 18. Yeah, he's waiting for her to turn 18. <laughs> That's what he's doing. Okay, so um, yeah. Anyways, that all happens where Dean pays for the door that got damaged and tells Hank to leave her alone. And then we go to the fashion show. And that's where Jesse sees Gigi. And it's the fashion show that Sarah's not getting to participate yeah. in. And they have a weird exchange in the dressing room. It's kind of like this tug of war of power where Gigi's like, you're in my chair. And but she gets up and gives it to her. But it doesn't yeah. seem to phase her at all. She's like, oh, okay, I'm sorry. Like, just kind of happy to be there. Um, looking around very just like, uh, I, like out of her element. But yet in her, like, I finally I'm in my element. She's so happy to be around all of and then the glitz and glam. During the actual fashion show is when the switch really happens. She's walking this really surreal fashion show with all these lights and diamonds and things. And she starts kissing her reflection. Yes. As she's like, like you know, embracing it. She had just like she is doing that because she's elated because the fashion designer tells her, You're gonna close my show. So imagine you have little to none experience in Los Angeles in the fashion industry as you a show model. Up. You show up. You, you you turn in a headshot to, like, a great agency. They take you on just like that. They give you a photo shoot with a prominent photographer in Los Angeles. Everything is just like, oh, she got that. Oh, she got that. How she, She's just beautiful enough. Uh -huh. she's just, is there something about her? Is she magical or is she... What Who is that it? Bucky? Who that Bucky? Who that Bucky, for sure. So, anyways, Gigi's pissed because Baby Girl is now walking that fashion yeah. show, closing it, which is, that's top model shit. Like, you're, that's high value right there. Yeah. You close the show, you're wearing the end of the show dress. She got it. She got it. <laughs> they all go to dinner that night afterwards, and this is where Dean goes to dinner with her. That's why I'm kind of like, I mean, yeah, he is kind of waiting for her to be 18 because he's <laughs> still wanting to like hold her hand and take and her around. They show up and Gigi and is it the, it's the, the designer. designer and another model. And there's a few other models sitting there and they're all talking about beauty and what's beautiful. And, and he's like regaling them with like some shitty Shakespeare yes. that he knows. But he's doing a really hilarious job of reciting and they're like oh did you always know you wanted to be an actor you can tell by how they are acting that they that they have practiced sitting in front of a man who just wants to talk about himself yeah and to keep like just i don't know the feeding his own narcissism because it might be to the benefit of them yeah well jesse and dean show up and they're like sorry there's not room for two at our table so they're like we'll take another table but then Jesse turns on Dean in this moment and kind of lets him know, like, you're not worth being around me. Yeah, because he tries to take up for her because there is this engagement moment between the two tables where the fashion designer asks Dean if Gigi is beautiful. And Dean says, yeah, she's fine. At, because he isn't, he's not attracted to her. So, yeah, yeah she's fine. And that is exact. It's almost exactly what the fashion designer wanted him to say. He's like, exactly. She's fine. And then he says, but Jesse is perfect. Uh -huh. And she's naturally beautiful. And it, she isn't uh, made up with machines. And she isn't cut into and plastic. So immediately, like, Gigi isn't feeling as confident in herself anymore. Everything she's done, everything she's bought, put into she's been herself. Exposed yeah. By someone that she thinks is beneath her too. Yes. Yeah, she wasn't worried about Jesse and all of a sudden Jesse is Apex Predator. So she's at the top of the food chain. And then Jesse's not really nice to him. She tells him, like, yeah, go ahead, leave. 
Yeah, Dean's like, I want to go. This guy is like a douche. She's like, all right, then go. Yeah. And he waits for her outside, and he's like, is this really what you are wanting? And she's like, no, Dean, it's not what I'm wanting. They want to be me. Yeah. Like, she's even above, like, she has... She's gone. Inflated her head to the point where, okay, girl, if you climb that high... There's only one way to go. She believes everything that everybody is saying about her. Yes. She's, nobody's better than Jesse at she this moment. She is the most perfect human being. And she's also 16. So, so she's she goes home. Immature herself. Yeah. Her frontal lobe has not developed and it won't for several more years, guys. Okay. Um, so, yeah, Ruby, on top of, like, being uh, a like a makeup artist she also works at like the morgue so that's just important to bring up because of something that'll later come up um so jesse goes back to her hotel she's feeling good about herself you know she's been told she's the most beautiful thing on in the planet and then all of a sudden someone tries to get in her door yeah she has that dream about being held at knife point and choking on a knife. Yes, and this then, is when she gets choked. And then she wakes up from that. That scares her. And then... There's really somebody at the door, but they can't get in. She sits up against the door, not letting them in. And then the person moves along, and you hear screaming coming from the room next door. And this is where I have read different things that people believe maybe this is a dream, because the girl, the 13-year-old that you think or assume is getting killed next door... Because you're listening to someone scream and get beat up or murdered or something. Or raped. Or raped. was actually two doors down, not right next door. Yeah. So. So that might be, like, just a, an error in the writing. Yeah. Or, or we're looking. Yeah, exactly. Or we're just looking to. Yeah. So. Okay. But that's why this film is um, pretty cool. Because you can take a lot, lot of to different. Interpret. Yeah. A lot to interpret. Um, so that scares her and she calls Ruby and asks if she can stay with her and Ruby is house sitting at a very uh, big huge mansion in the Hollywood Hills and there's something going on with that because Jesse's like how long can I stay here and Ruby's like you can stay as long as you want they won't care if you're here yeah it's like okay they maybe because they're dead yeah maybe they're not ever coming back and she killed them and you see her well she says like yeah I'm here to feed the dogs and water the plants and it's true you do see her like watering topless and but you never see dogs, so I don't know. Yeah. Um, okay. So, um, she, so she comes over, and yeah, Ruby's like, make yourself at home. And it's this humongous, like, palace-looking fucking house. It's like, and it's in the Hollywood Hills. So it's got beautiful views. There's a pool, but it doesn't have no water in it. And Jessie's like, take herself a long bathy and have herself a little chow chow La douche, as they say in <laughs> French. Douche. And, um... And then when she comes out, get ready, uh, Ruby has, like, supplied her with some clothes to wear. But they're very, like, beautiful fabrics of, like, satin and make her look beautiful. She's like, I'm going to comb your hair. My mom used to comb my hair when I was young Mm -hmm. to make me feel better. I don't need it for any kind of weird witch's brew I might be Yeah, and then she puts the moves on Jesse. Yes, there is a... Another like rape. Well, yeah, she comes on to Jesse and is like coming on strong, getting on top of her. She's forcing, forcing herself, herself on her. On so her. there, uh, attempted rape is happening. Yeah, for sure. Of a minor. <laughs> of a minor. So also, yeah, pedophilia. Oh my gosh, we could just go on with the crimes being committed right there. Yeah, it's disgusting. Um, and you're like, girl, get off, back off, back to fuck off. So she's feeling like rejected. Um, and. Pissed uh, off now because she wanted to take her V card. Yes. And for some, for reasons beyond sexual gratification, she yeah. wanted to take her V card. Okay, so so Ruby goes to work and she is pissed and she's at the morgue because she's also like a beautician for uh, when you know people die and you get them ready for caskets mm-hmm. and stuff. She's so pissed off it makes her horny as she gets on top of this dead Jesse lookalike almost. And like, well, she's a blonde-haired lady. And, yeah, yeah, definitely has some of the looks. Mm-hmm. And, I think it's supposed to be kind of reminiscent yeah. of Jesse, and she's like straddling her and kissing her, spitting on her. Well, she's committing necrophilia, which yeah. is a crime. It's, There's a lot of crime. A lot of crimes, a lot of sex crimes. In and this movie. you can tell this ain't her first rodeo. And she's 
thinking about Jesse. I'm not sure if Jesse's actually filling herself up and getting off next door, but it keeps cutting to Jesse in her lingerie or like her nighty. I nightgown. think she's just in her head. In her head. That's yeah, why I kind of assume it too. And so I don't think. Well, then she finds Jesse just like hanging out on. There's like an empty. Nothing ever good comes from an empty swimming, swimming pool. Yeah. And Jesse's on the diving board of an empty swimming pool. I'm like, girl, you're risking your life right there. And she's like making uh, she's she's talking to Ruby and she's confessing really like how women just want to be like her they want to poke and prod at themselves and slice themselves up to look like a second rate version of me. She's being very condescending too about it in her very dream like matter of fact way like they just want to be like it's all gone to her head she's full on into the narcissism. Yes. Which is a huge theme of the movie. The neon demon, the demon might be narcissism. Mm. And the neon... There could be literal demons yeah. in the movie, which there are. There's like kind of demon witches, which we're going to talk about. There's and a lot then of there's layers. And there's like, yeah, it could be the narcissism itself that takes over. Um, so, yeah, it's Re- it's kind of Regina George-ish a little bit. Like, uh, how she's coming off. Like, they all want to be me. Yeah. You know, right? Like, I'm, I am just, I am... Gorgeousity. And they've kind of had it. And it's a very dreamy sequence. You can see, like, downtown LA in the background. It's just Ruby. She's who he, kind of we floating. Think hears this, yeah. But. And she's kind of floating on the diving board. And, and she's in this very flowy gown. At twilight. You know, um, it's a pretty gown. But, um, okay, so she thinks she's just talking to Ruby. And then she starts, you know, walking off the diving board and going back into the house. And then she sees Sarah with a knife. And then she sees Gigi. And Gigi got something that wants she wants to fuck her up her. with. And then all three of them are chasing her through the house. We got a great chase scene. I tussling chase scene. with her. And Jessie grabs a knife at one point. She's, you but know, it's a, it's a, she's trying to flee. They're fighting. She gets hit. She gets back out into the backyard area and she's backing up. And she backs up enough that she teeters right on the, the pool yeah, edge of the swimming pool. And Ruby pushes her over. And it's a deep pool. I'm, I bet you it's like 12 foot deep. And oh, and it's that's, a gnarly injury that we're yeah. about to see, folks. And it's, she's severe, like all of her limbs are broken. And oh, I, I bet you like her neck was busted. broken and all that she's kind of stuff. She's bleeding out. She's not even making any noise, just shaking. Just shaking. Which limbs in all different directions. It's she won't go make nasty. it, baby girl was going to be dead. So. And then they all kind of walk down into the pool and just stare In a very at her. ritualistic kind of way, like surrounding her and intensely looking at her and then cut to we got them bathing ruby <laughs> in a bath full of blood and water and then uh the two girls Gigi and sarah are in the shower together getting all the blood off of getting, themselves cleaning it off of them and ruby but, even has like the blood on her face like a facial as she's laying in the tub and of it's, blood and they and it's the it's it's not just blood there's like material you know like there's some fat or not even fat but like skin particles tissue. and tissue and tissue. maybe you see bits and pieces of her of tissue of tissue <laughs> um the tissue like, that you see r- really that. try to yeah you i do i need to say it one more time one more time tissue <laughs> um so yeah we know that we know that by then she's been consumed yeah and then you and get it cuts to the shot of ruby standing in this big open lofty space of the house at this huge window that the full moon is shining through yes and she's standing there just like Legs saluting spread. the moon yeah and then she lays down and spreads her leg and you get this shot where like she, her connie is like yeah. all shadowed out but then she just starts menstruating everywhere and there's just blood and almost i thought it was pee her. at first because it's coming but out it's, like yeah but it, it's but also it's really thick yeah. too like it's not, a, yeah. It could be pee pee. It could be blood because it is dark. It. I think it, she's getting ready for a new cycle. It could be menstrual for like, blood. She's yeah, like she's next pushing victim. out, like yeah, yeah for sure. Ugh. Pushing and out the, Gigi. Like, well, and the full moon Jesse, I mean. lends itself to or that ritual, kind of idea yeah, being of it. Yeah, and the cycle. And, demonic, which those are two separate things, witchcraft and. Yes. So a demonic, maybe cultish kind of thing. Yeah. Not so much Not witches Wicca as, like no, but Earth still <laughs> like supernatural and still maybe dealing with like, uh, you know, forces beyond Arc and, and reality. Arc and, 
material yes. forms. I was about to say something that didn't make sense. Oh, that's, a, that's okay. I do often on this podcast. <laughs> uh, sometimes I'll listen back and be like, oh, what the fuck were you even trying to say? Oh, well, we just keep going. We're almost done, guys. Uh, we get to the last... Yeah, there's bit, about... Because uh, that was the last bit. We'll see if we're... This is almost like an epilogue, it feels yeah. like. And cut to, it's like the next day or maybe, yeah, maybe a day. I, I, next day is what I think because of what happens. Yes. So they go to a photo shoot again in the Hollywood Hills. And it's that... Uh, and it's the guy, the photographer That's from the, the gold scene. Shoot. Yeah, with the gold. Uh, per, you know, Maybe he was a pervert, but maybe it's because we knew she was 16. Um, and he's shooting outside, and it's these... It's... Girls in these red leather with sunglasses, and they're yeah, standing by a pool, and, and palm trees. They've and... got... It's a, it's a mood kind of yeah. shoot. For, and Sarah has taken Gigi to it. She's sitting in the back. You can tell she's still feeling rejected. Like, you know, she's, again, like, an older... And that's just by the standards that they've placed in the movie, an older model. Yeah. So she is listening to conversations that another model who is on the shoot is making while they're all in hair and makeup and she's talking about how she's like 20 and how uh, pff, after 20 you're basically like done and how she like uh, wanted to ask them like has a, another girl ever like taken a shoot from you and Sarah's like yeah and Annie says well like what did you do about it and Sarah says I, I ate, ate her <laughs> so now we know for sure they did Eat her. They didn't just like bathe they in her blood. blood. They consumed her. They ate that tissue. They took they took the metaphorical and made it literal. The idea that LA consumes you. They were like, we're in LA. We're gonna eat her. That's what we do. Um, okay, so but we see Gigi out there on the shoot now with the other model, uh, Annie, and she's like wrenching kind of like or wrenching like yeah getting sick uh, just she's, like, she's trying to hold that barf in her yeah, mouth yeah because obviously you you know don't want to disrupt a shoot time is money <laughs> and she doesn't want to get fired you want to save that daylight yeah you don't want to you just don't want to put a bad taste in someone's mouth by fucking with their time and, then and money Lee from Black Christmas shows up she's like I'm here <laughs> if somebody needs me alright <laughs> It's a really weird. Lee showed up. Lee Holy showed shit! Up. I don't know why. Lee. I'm like Nicholas finding Wow! Really... How was your Christmas, Lee? <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Yeah. So she showed up. She's like, <laughs> I can model for you. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll hold my hands like a cup. Or a okay. bowl, and you can throw up in my hand. Lee from Black Christmas, a few episodes ago. Go back ago. a few episodes. Hi. If you don't know. Golly, it's like whenever Tangina shows up. <laughs> now there's gonna be Lee. Oh God. Okay, so last bit is that she, you know, finally is like, I gotta go throw up. She leaves the shoe, goes to the bathroom. Sarah follows her because she's like, What the fuck? That's my friend. I gotta go see what's wrong with her. She's picking oh, things up. Wait. No, in between that, so that so Annie had asked her the, the question: Has a girl ever stole your shoe? Sarah, who had been sitting there looking all forlorn, out you know on the ocean and everything, the photographer I guess just doesn't vibe with Annie, and he straight up fires Annie and asks Sarah to take her spot. And Sarah's like, okay. So yeah. Sarah is sh- doing now. the shoot with Gigi, and. And that itself shows a way of, like, good things are happening to her because of the actions that Uh she did by eating Jesse. Yep. Okay, so, Gigi's over getting... Something has to do with something. Something got to do with something. That's right, boo. Gigi, though, she's like, I'm about to barf. So, she does leave the shoot, goes to the bathroom. Sarah goes after her. Gigi breaks down and is like, I can't do this. I just don't got it in me. I got to get her out of me. I got to get her out of me. She starts throwing up, like, blood and an eyeball. A big eyeball comes out and hits the floor. With it's a, a perfect of, eyeball, too. With a lot of chunky tissue. Tissue. <laughs> and, um, tissue, tiss me. Unfortunately, this is another one of those violent moments. Here we go. Yeah, she's like, I guess not happy with how much of Jesse she got out of her. So she, what did she grab? What did she? There's a pair of scissors because she's, right. you know, the, it's a fashion shoot, so they tailor things right on the spot. She grabs a pair of scissors and just cuts 
embow like disembowels herself. Yeah. Just takes it uh, and empties out her tum tums. Literally, it, her insides are on the outside. I wonder why did Jesse service Sarah but not Gigi? What was it that it settled fine and helped Sarah? Maybe she just had Jesse what it took. Oh, you know what? It's because Sarah was a plastic and had like maybe a natural no, Gigi, body. Gigi was plastic. Well, yeah, Gigi's yeah. the one who's stabbing herself. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. That's why she couldn't handle it. Uh -huh. I said the wrong name, but yeah. Because she couldn't, maybe because she wasn't natural. Uh, who knows? I also think there's motivation to it. Like, she just at the end of the day couldn't hack it for mm -hmm. a demonic play. You know? Like, she just didn't have what it took. And Sarah, who is completely a absorbed her, yeah. with, yeah, mm -hmm. Uh, the uh, the the mean side of <laughs> yeah. everything. She reaches over and grabs the eyeball and just pops it in her mouth like some popcorn. Eats it and then walks off. And yep. it's like, they'll find her. So we begin with Jesse's eye and we end with Jesse's eyeball. Yes. And then we get our credits and uh, the credits are like the Mojave. They yeah. uh, are just showing maybe the the dead part of El I mean, it's pretty, but it's the dead. Outskirts, the desert, and it is the um, wild. It's maybe Sarah. We don't. We just see the back of um, of someone. It's either Sarah or Jesse. I just can't remember at this point who it is, and I didn't write it down. But there is just like somebody walking in the desert that we see the their back, and and then and then they leave, and we just see just the little mountainous area, and and then roll you know, credits. Rolled him Roll them credits. Roll that beautiful bean footage. <laughs> <laughs> Roll that beautiful bean footage. So yeah, it's it's definitely one of those movies that maybe a second viewing will help. I honestly didn't really care for it the first time I saw it. It was rewatching it for this that it kind of struck a chord with me more. I yeah. Mean, I got into it more this time and just kind of went with the visuals. And, and then that third time, that fourth time, yeah. you're just like picking up on all of those little one of those Easter eggs, or not Easter eggs, but like the foreboding things yeah. that you didn't see before. All right. But yeah, we're going to go to Vegas. And we're going to Vegas. We're, we're, we're going to Vegas. We're almost into Arizona, so we got another state to drive through before we're into Nevada. Mm -hmm. And we're going to go to the gray, neon graveyard. Boneyard. Boneyard. I mean, whatever. It's yeah. neon. <laughs> <laughs> and then we'll be back to talk to you about our favorite scenes, give our knife ratings. Uh, maybe talk about what's up next. Yeah. All right. See you guys in like just a tit. A tit. See ya. Hi and welcome back. Oh my gosh. Hey guys. It is a windy, windy afternoon yeah, in might, Arizona. You might have caught me telling the wind to shush <laughs> just now. <laughs> we are heading back from our wonderful whirlwind of a weekend extended weekend in Vegas yes we have we had a lot of fun visiting my sister Hi, and Dakota. she uh, and seeing our wonderful little pup oh, Dobby my baby boy Dobby. he's a little, my little nephew. English bulldog <laughs> we're aunties <Yeah>. um, okay <laughs> So, uh, yeah, but we had tons of fun in Las Vegas. We stayed COVID safe, but um, tried to enjoy and get outdoors. And yeah. Unfortunately, we're having to cut our trip a day short, and we are heading towards a blizzard. We're trying to get home kind of in time to beat a blizzard that's coming to town. It yes. was either leave a day earlier or be in Vegas for like three or four more days. And we have work and things. And we have responsibilities, guys. So we were so. like, we got to go. But we had a great time, and we did make it to the Neon Boneyard. Yes, neon we... Neon Boneyard. That was a lot of um, fun. It was exactly what we thought it would be, yeah. but it was beautiful, and... It's, like, really great photo opportunities. It's lit up. You get some cool history. They have some of, like, the oldest lit neon signs from Vegas. They had, like, the first... Uh, sign from a gay bar in Vegas. They have, you know, the old but iconic um, Hard Rock And like Cafe. Moulin Rouge sign. Yeah, the Moulin and, Rouge, Liberace. Yeah, Liberace, Stardust. They have, um, and a lot of them were lit up. And then they had a lot of like, yeah, you said history, but 
fun facts about like neon signs and like the chemistry behind them and how you can like tell if a sign uh, like a, it's a neon sign and not like an argon or something sign yeah. um so guys basically we're geniuses and have a phd yeah. now in neon signs. there are 32 is 32 or 33 colors that are certified neon neon 32 <laughs> there's something like that yeah i tried to keep that fact in my head because i was like that is so cool that is so super neat but um and we were we took a guided tour so dave our guide he, he took told us, us so much around um it yeah it felt long enough like we got to see, and these signs are huge like 40 feet and they would be laying on their sides and, and he let you like while he was talking kind of wander around take pictures it and he encouraged you to take pictures like take as many pictures as you can we weren't supposed to take videos but we may or may not have snuck a, a video or two and not Oops. like we were gonna like make any money it was like more or less like, like boomerang yeah it was like boomerangs Instagram. it was like memories it was yeah. like get over it i'm yeah. not selling that shit i'm not the paparazzi papa paparazzi i think my favorite sign was the stardust Oh, really cool. okay. All right. Well, I loved rock the Hard Rock. Yeah, the Hard Rock Cafe. And then I did like the hair, old Harris sign that they had. There was a whole bunch yeah, of H's. That was cool. It was really neat. And he would talk oh. about like how many bulbs were in a sign. There'd be like over a thousand light bulbs on these signs. Like the Stardust had like over a thousand. Yeah. It was so cool. Do you know what I associate the Hard Rock Cafe with the most? Your mom. <laughs> yes, because she's a famous rock star. Uh -huh. But no, most importantly, honey, I blew up the kid. Oh, I blew up the baby, oh, remember? Yeah. It's like all in Vegas, and he's like, I think, tears up the hard rock. I think Hotel. he tears up the hard rock. Well, he I, does, yeah. I haven't watched it in like 20 years, but I watched the shit out of that movie as a kid. Carrie yeah. Russell was the babysitter. That's right. Her beautiful, she, curly locks. She had locks. them curls. It was before Felicity. <laughs> it was just, here she is. Um, but you know what? There, I thought of a really cool correlation between the neon demon, neon boneyard. It's both about like aging beauty yes. and like where things, oh my God. where things go to like rest or die, and how we discard things after we consider them old and maybe not as like beautiful or glamorous or glitzy anymore. And yeah. So I like that connection with the neon boneyard and neon demon. <laughs> oh, I totally am there with you. That is such a great little segue into what we are here to wrap up. We're going to wrap it up, wrap it up, uh, wrap up that movie. We also got to eat some yummy food and can't pass up the opportunity to name off a couple of yeah, restaurants that we visited. Off, so we ate at Mas Por Favor. We got to stay in the speakeasy yeah, in the back. Ooh, they, cool. mm, they hit my back like they hit my back my mouth from my mouth the, the decor sides. was nice and dark and it's like roses and skulls yes it's like our aesthetic it was definitely like <laughs> dia de la muerte it was gonna yes be a lot of that and they had um amazing cocktails all kind of tequila but yeah, they're a full bar but they specialize tequila. in tequila and so we had margaritas we had Robin, um these Day. they were called like the oh, el borracho yeah, and they were um, these tequila cocktails in, that were inside a paper bag that was smoking. Mm -hmm. So good. We had those Dorito bags that were covered in nacho yes. toppings. I had a deep fried taco and it kind of tasted like a cheeseburger I had inside. A pulled pork taco and the tortilla was made out of like a smash down, kind of like they would do a, make a tortilla, but it was uh, the Hawaiian roll. Oh my god, mm. delicious. A Hawaiian roll tor turned into a tortilla. And then to cap it off, we had the Choco, house made Choco Taco. Like it Divinity. was. Oh my god, and we had lots of drink. Oh my goodness, guys, we ate like queens, yes. like scream queens. Dakota made us a special meal on our first night in. Oh, it yes. was wonderful. It was from a TikTok video that like fed a tomato thing. It was amazing. Mm. Thanks, yeah, girl. but we ate like ramen at this restaurant called Sora and had some wonderful Japanese beer. Everything was amazing. Yeah, we tried to keep it outdoors. Like the great thing about right now for COVID times is the neon boneyard is all outdoors. Yes. And they keep it uh, small groups. I don't think more than 10. 
and so you can social distance while you're out there. You don't have to huddle in a group. And so perfect place if you're in Vegas for COVID time. Huddling, cuddling. Huddling, cuddling. Went out to the Seven Magic Mountain. Yes. A cool little roadside art installation. Great for Instagram photo ops. Yeah, and they're these kind of, and some of them are neon painted. Um, the yeah, but all just different colors of bright rocks and the you know mountains and in the desert. It just it was um, true gorgeousness beyond measure. <laughs> We got to see the Welcome to Las Vegas sign, another like neon sign that we took yes. pictures in front of. But yeah, it was great. We it had a good did. time, and now we're heading back towards a blizzard. Yep, there's no neon city there. It's a snow cover. They're gonna get like a foot of snow. So, yay! Yeah. <laughs> so we get home in time. We also had some good coffee at Bad Al Coffee and Samba Latte. They were like, guys, and what, Las Vegas, duh, we know about like the casinos, about this, about that, we know. But other things, the other attractions. Food. Food, culture, <laughs> art, S staying away from people with COVID on the strip, yeah. you know. We'll definitely be back to do more episodes probably in Vegas. There's a lot to mine there. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We watched some TV, too. We caught up with that, like, uh, documentary. That, yeah. Crime scene. Elisa Lamb. Yeah. The vanishing of Elisa Lamb. It was good. It was Watch great. It. Yeah. Catch it. And then Mystery song. <laughs> Free Britney. We watched the... Yes. Hashtag Free Britney. For, Poor girl. Oh, my gosh, girl. We, we got you. Hashtag Free Britney. Yeah. We're, we're, we're ra we were radicalized. We are part we're of there. the movement. We're um, part of the movement. And you're speaking about a girl who got kind of like eaten up and churned out. Yeah. Neon Here Demon. we go. She neon got Demon. Neon Demon. She did. Britney Spears was Neon Demon. Neon Demon. Okay, so we, we went to the Neon Boneyard and we had you had the revelation about yes. that tie into Joshua. So let's get into it. Like what's What's, what's your, your favorite scene, girl? What's my favorite yeah, scene? You I'll tell Okay, it. yeah, I'll go for it. Um my favorite scene I think is that transition scene where she walks down that runway, she has that trippy moment with the triangles and the blue, and she just becomes the, she, she flips, she becomes a neon demon. Yeah, it's very hypnotic, <clears throat> menacing. And I like it because there's this wonderful music that, you know, kind of electro, but also like orchestra, there's that, it's just that subliminal feeling going on. She's selling way more than just her body, she's selling her soul right now. Like she's willing to step into the dark side, walk that catwalk, stomp on other people if need be, because people want to beat her. They do. They want to be her, and it's um, it's a frightening scene, but not in like a horrific way. It's just one of those like, oh my gosh, something's going on here. Yeah, you. It's a little trippy. There is a shift happening. Mm -hmm. There's a shit happening. I mean, a shift happening. <laughs> don't, shit happening. Don't shit on a shift. So it's beautiful, and it is one of those like non-violent moments. But like I said, there's something kind of terrifying about it. It's frightening what what's still happening because you know that she's stepping into stepping into the dark side. Oh the wow. Okay. What about you? My favorite's kind of a collection. I like. I oh, think, you're getting a whole collection? I'm a collection. Jeez. <laughs> and, one, two, three, four, five. Um, I feel like she's at her most vulnerable, and it's, to me, I'm always a little bit more anxious when she's at the hotel. So, when she discovers a leopard, when she has the dream of Keanu sticking the thing in her mouth, when she's hearing the mur baby murder next door, just kind of all the moments at the hotel... Well, like, geez, that's but, a lot of different and, Well, I'm going along with the fact that it's not the supernatural in this, that sometimes it's the scariest. And we both made a point not to pick the ending. Cause yeah, like, we that's did. Uh, the most obvious choice. Kinda of course, chatted it out the last there. 25 minutes is the most gnarly and awesome. Yeah, so but, we did try to, like, so we talked about, we'll leave that in for what it, it is. So, I'll, all I'm saying is I'm most worried about her, most kind of on the edge of my seat when she's at the hotel. Yeah. I and get it's you. also like just more of a human worry or vulnerability than it is. And she cut about, her hands, she's passing out. Yeah. Like she getting dreams where she's getting that knife down her throat. Those are all 
uh, you know, something like you don't want to wake up, you don't want that to happen to you, you identify like a little bit, not relate because you haven't probably woken up with somebody else yeah. doing it. But and nah, the fact nah, that she's living this glamorous life now, but yeah. still, Just like the real the her dingy. is at the dingy mm-hmm. hotel. She's she's still the dingy. hiding from something, but we don't quite know. Yeah. That it would be my bag. She's just, she ended up being food. Yeah, food for some demons. Ravenous demons. Neon demons out That's there. Right. Uh, okay. Wow. So, yes. Give me your knife rating. How many slashes do you give it? Out of five knives, I'm going to go three. I do enjoy it. I enjoy it more than when I first watched it. And I think each of you, I kind of enjoy it a little bit more. It is a little bit style over st- substance. I do think he is saying something, though. You know, obviously, it's a comment on our culture. But, and I don't think it's shallow, but it is a lot about the visuals, the pretty outfits, the cinematography, the music, the glitz, the glam, like this certain look he's going for. Yeah. Um to kind of juxtapose the blood and the violence. Yeah. Blood and high heels. I I agree with your knives. I give it three knives. And uh, your assessment, yeah, I follow with, because all of those things are good, but they it, they don't quite make it, like, great, like five knives. You know, like, all of those things, they do add to it. They elevate it. They, you know, it's very artsy. Um, and it's pretty and, but it, but because I want it to be maybe a little bit more horrific, um, or that the whore doesn't, um, uh, isn't the unsettling part. Like, you know, it's always the, the music that build up before or whatever, yeah. like the payoffs are just a little different, uh, but I do enjoy the end when she disembowels, not enjoy, but like, it's that's a good ending. A good ending. Yeah, like and it. It's an immediate, like, it's also, like, she's so used to cutting into herself that that seems like exactly what you do to remove a problem. Uh-huh. You just cut it out. And so, I I do like where, where the message, I just kind of wish maybe the message was a little bit more spelled out. And, uh, yeah, maybe some more, uh, the eyeball eating is good, but I do like it's, yeah, what but, it's trying to do. Yeah, you just walk walk that fine line where you spell it too much out. You're yeah. like in lifetime movie. That's true. Yeah. Anymore. And it's and more, the it's moralized too much. Yeah. But. I don't want it to be a weird PSA. I didn't. That's not what I'm saying. Yeah. But okay. Well, guys, we're done. We're in COVID time. <laughs> yeah. Things are still shifting around for next month's episode. It's gonna be a mystery episode. Right now, it's a mystery to us too. But you will get an episode next month. Um, we're and we're excited to figure it out. Yeah. So we will see you next month for episode 62. Hold on, though, before we leave. Um, oh. We do want to say uh, thank you so much for the wonderful review that was left by Tycan17. Uh, thanks. Yeah, it was, it was... It was really hard. Yeah, when My we heart read it, was, it really was heartfelt. Hashtag, meant a lot to us. I've been it, seen. it helps us out a lot. We really appreciate it. Thank you so much. And remember, yeah, go check us out on iTunes or I guess with Apple. Um, We're on all the platforms, guys. Stitcher. What else is there? Yeah, give us a review. Wherever you're at, give us a review. Great. We love love hearing. uh, And if you guys ever have an idea, please let us know. Like, uh, we've got to get all around the USA. Yeah, we're always looking for interesting movie DM road us trip in the combo. Queens, so yeah, give Instagram. us your suggestions. Yeah. Hit We're... us up. Alright. Yeah, we'll see you later. Love you. Bye. Bye.